Hello my darlings, welcome to a new vlog. I think you can probably tell that this is going to be the heatwave vlog based on the attire. I'm in one of my really lovely loose um, H&M dresses from last year and I might actually get changed into a bikini in a second. So it's actually Saturday afternoon already. We had a really nice morning at Bamford. I did, I followed another one of those Peloton gym workouts. They're very good if you have already got quite good knowledge on what on how to do exercises for example like barbell squats or something but maybe just need a little bit of inspiration for a routine to follow so for me having had a personal trainer for nearly a year now maybe, well we had a PT in Clapham as well but we've had Simon here at the house for nearly a year um, so I think my form is pretty good I know how to do most exercises but sometimes just need someone to tell me which one to do next and have like a routine so yeah it's very good for that it's the gym section on the Peloton app and I don't think you have to have a Peloton to do it so there we go little top tip so I did one of those classes and then we had breakfast there my usual is avocado on toast with loads of seeds on top and then an acai bowl which is really yummy and keeps me full most of the day and then we just had a bit of a, a mini Cotswold road trip. You might have seen some clips following a, a line of defenders to take um, some of the defenders that we borrowed from our friend Ben for the wedding. We just dropped them back at his house, had a little look around their garden updates, which was glorious. And now it's around 27 degrees. It's a little bit cloudy but um, like sun and cloud so perfect gardening weather my arm is aching already I'm gonna have to pop you down ah oh, the trusty coffee machine um, yeah it's perfect gardening weather so I'm going to pop on a Zoe podcast they're talking about snacking just as I was about to reach for an afternoon snack they literally said afternoon snacks are really not good for you so I'll have to wait for dinner we're gonna have steak and kitchen garden veg for dinner I've been deadheading some roses, I have been putting some supports on my salvia and now I need to string up my broad beans and sweet peas. So my gardening chores for today. I've actually been pretty good at keeping on top of things but as you can see a lot of my radishes have started to bolt over here. I would normally do things like this in the evening, just pull them up as I see them bolting, but they're actually really prickly. The stems on the bolty bits are a little bit spiky, so I don't tend to wear gloves on our evening garden walks, but that is when I try and keep on top of a little bit of the maintenance. So I'm going to pull up my bolted radish. I am going to string in my sweet peas, which are doing fabulously. More bolted radish over here. I need to plant some more, but I think it's just too hot at the moment. The raspberries are doing well. Look at this. Quite a few growing in there. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Some bolted lettuce that needs to come out as well. Bolting tends to happen when things get very hot and not enough water. Must ensure that my pumpkins and my courgettes stay watered and fed. I think we have got some little yellow zucchini starting to come through there um and i think i figured out that this was a regular yeah look my first little courgette can you see here goodness me i'm excited i'm really excited to go to george and petra's tomorrow to see how their courgettes and pumpkins are doing the rhubarb is looking mega i might see if there's a rhubarb recipe that i can do tonight something that i can take over there for pudding tomorrow maybe even like a rhubarb ice cream or something i think we've got lots of milk presume that's needed. I need to harvest some broad beans and also string some of them up. What else, what else? Gosh, I am gonna have to go and pop a bikini on because it's toasty McRoasty. Yeah, I think it's 27 today. And, oh, hello, Bumblebee. By the way, I don't know if um, I included it earlier, but I'll pop on the screen here. As Charlie and I were trying to figure out the um, road closure route to get to Ben's, Ben and Robin's house, a little hedgehog just ran past us and it was very adorable. Sweet peas. I've had a few of you guys messaging me on Instagram saying that your sweet peas aren't doing very well this year. Well, mine have only been doing well for the last four days, I would say. Um, and the more you pick them, the more they will grow. So if you've got even like only four or five flowers, pick them, snip them, and more will grow back. Same with anything from the pea family. So I'm going to be doing some more Mange 2 picking. I swear I picked them all yesterday, but even now I can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine endless amounts of Mange 2 over there. This bed, um, I think I'm going to thin out my spinach. Got some bolty bits over there. 
my pak choy is or bok choy down here bolting a little bit too so it's going to be a really nice afternoon down here um just doing a little bit of sorting so i'm going to pop you guys on a time lapse and let's get busy <laughs> cap but it is actually an essential for gardening so this is some of what I've just harvested I've got way more um, but we have got loads and loads of mange too or sugar snap which are just great for snacking on really good for putting in stir fries um, Thai green curry salads yummy and then these are my favorite these are an early maturing pea pod and inside, these little peas are so sweet and yummy. Look at this. They literally taste like little candies. They are so sweet. Mm, I love them. it has clouded over and Charlie and I are both absolutely exhausted as you might have guessed from that little clip we're doing steak and macaroni cheese for dinner we're going to watch a film tonight and this is quite a monu monumentous or momentous possibly both occasion because Charlie was using the hob for his steak so I needed to try creating the cheese sauce for my mac and cheese in the Thermomix a little bit of guesswork, I basically used all the same ingredients as I normally would, including the mustard, cheddar, parmesan, milk, butter, flour, salt and pepper. Um, but yeah, did it in the thumb mix. And from that little taster that I just had, I think it's going to be quite exceptional and very smooth and much easier. So this might potentially change my life, I'm not going to lie, <laughs> it's going to change everything. So the film that Charlie and I are going to watch this evening, I'm very, very excited about. It's one that I really wanted to watch in, or we both really wanted to watch in cinemas, but just never got round to it. It's Don't Worry Darling, and I know it as the film that has Harry Styles in. <laughs> it is also, of course, Florence Pugh. Is it directed by Olivia Wilde, or is she in it? I'm not sure, about to find out. I believe set in a 1950s kind of dystopia place, but I think it's kind of Palm Springs. Um, I've heard really good things from friends that have seen it already, but it is now out on Sky Cinema, so that's what we're going to tune into. So I'm going to get my mac and cheese out of the oven, and then I'll give you a full rundown on not only the mac and cheese, but the film as well. That's a lot of fairy liquid. There will be some mac and cheese here if you want to have some. I think we might have a bit of a game changer on our hands here, you know? Mac and cheese in the 
from the mixture. Mmm. Well, the shower likes finishing that thing, right? Mm hmm. But that whole thing. Easier to um, do the washing up. They tend to watch state television mm. instead. Okay, so as always, we are spoiled for choice with films on Sky mm. Cinema this month. Excuse me. <laughs> Taxi is being a bit bossy. And this month, I did read somewhere that it is actually the 30th year anniversary of Jurassic Park, which is absolutely insane. Mm. Um, a guy at my school's dad actually used to make the masks for all the like robotics for the creatures in Jurassic Park, which I think is absolutely insane. He used to bring them to school sometimes. My gosh, that shows my age. Um, but yes, here we are. We are going to watch Don't Worry Darling, Harry Styles, looking ever so handsome. Okay, let's give this a go. You're not old enough, Dex. <laughs> this film contains... Good morning, my darlings. It's Sunday morning and boy, oh boy, is it a glorious morning. That is the church bells chiming 9am, which is quite leisurely for me. Um, didn't even have a late night. I think we're still actually just catching up on sleep and energy levels from the wedding. So what do I rave about first? Do I rave about the film or do I rave about my mac and cheese? I think mac and cheese is quicker, so I'll just fill you in. I will be making my macaroni cheese sauce in the thermomix mix from now on. I think one of the one of the pitfalls um, and one of the things that is quite time consuming is the stirring. And obviously in the Thermomix, it's stirring constantly, stirring, cooking, perfect temperature. So I will leave up on the screen here exactly what you do in case you have got a Thermomix. It was divine. The only thing is it makes it a little bit harder to taste as you go. So I did under season it slightly, but now I know. And next time it will be perfection. I've just popped on the Elemis Rose um, Pro Collagen Micro Serum on my skin because today the skincare is all about hydration because it's gonna be 28 degrees today woohoo and my skin just needs ultra hydration my skin just drank that so quickly I'm applying another layer mm. oh and it smells so good any excuse to slather myself in this do you know what a body serum of this would be absolutely amazing okay so don't worry darling that is not a sentence that I just randomly said, although <laughs> I love that it's got the word darling in the title. The film, it was, it was exactly what I thought it would be, to be quite frankly honest. It was a visual feast for the eyes, set, although they never say Palm Springs, it's meant to be a, a little community called Victory, um, but set in the desert. And it's very dystopian, a little bit kind of black swanny. I loved the visuals of this film. The outfits were not like crazy but very wearable. I'm gonna be inspired by Don't Worry Darling when I pick my outfit for today. That was the Shiseido Ultimune Eye Serum. Eye concentrate. I don't love an eye cream but I love an eye concentrate. And then the next level of hydration. This might be a little sneak preview for you guys. I'm, I think it's out. Shinkai Electrolyte Drench from Beauty Pie. One of those things where if you just need mega hydration station for your face, like at this time of year, it's like a gel hydrating moisturizer. So it's just like throwing an entire bucket of water at your face and your face drinking it in. So love that and sinks in really, really quickly. So yeah, visually and the way that it's filmed, it's kind of like, this sounds, um, maybe OTT, but it's like if my dream Instagram were to be a film, like backlight, golden hour, beautiful lands, well, kind of beautiful landscapes, beautiful scenery, um, then that would be the film. Let's just leave that on my face to sink in for a few minutes because, ooh, my face is thirsty. As is Florence Pugh's character, I don't know if that's accept acceptable to say, um, but boy oh boy, there was a slightly rude scene at the very beginning, which 
I even felt uncomfortable watching. I would not want to watch that film with my mother, let's just say. It is quite naughty. Um, fans of Harry Styles <laughs> might enjoy it a little bit more than I did. Not that I'm not a fan of Harry Styles, I actually am. I'm not sure that he will be winning any Oscars anytime soon, but I really don't think he did a bad job. I enjoyed his acting. Um, I wasn't going into this film expecting like an extraordinarily elite acting experience from him, but I think for that film, he was perfect. Eye candy, yes, he has the look of a 1950s dystopian kind of Palm Springs weird um, community. I almost want to say like cult-like community. I'm obviously not going to tell you the twist to the film, but um, there's like a section in the middle of the film where you're like, I don't really know what's going to happen now, and then suddenly you get the twist, which just makes it all be like, ah, oh, and you kind of want to watch it back again once you know the twist. Um, and I love that on Sky Cinema, you know, you're not paying for, you're not paying to rent it. It's always there now, which is amazing. So I, can, so I will <laughs> be going back and watching it to look at the twist. Now that my skin has drunk a lot of that SPF 50, this is the Fenty, mm, do I have my skin in me? Uh, no, my skin in me factor 50 I think is downstairs because I always think that you should use a proper SPF, but this does have SPF 50, which you would need if you lived in Victory, which is where Don't Worry Darling is set. So if you're not familiar with the approximate kind of outline of the film, Harry Styles' character and Florence Pugh, who by the way was absolutely incredible, I adore her. I'm not one to like get obsessed with actors or actresses and follow all their work, but I have to say she was perfect for um, her role in the film. She did a fantastic job and she really kind of suits this 1950s look. I'll pop a little picture on the screen here. So basically, you don't really know what they're doing, but all the husbands every day, every weekday, are whisked off to the desert where there's a facility going on and the wives don't actually know what the husbands are doing for work. At the very beginning of the film you realise that it is a little bit of a mystery because there's some kind of like underground earthquake and Florence Pugh's character is like, oh darling was it an explosion? Did something go wrong? She's like trying to tease it out of Harry um, before they start being very rude um, and he's not giving anything away and then Chris Pine comes in as well. Charlie absolutely loved Chris Pine's character. I thought he was a bit of a menace really, a bit of a dark character and he's like I don't want to say cult leader, the boss, the top dog of this weird business that's going on underground in the desert. He hosts a party, they're bringing new people into the community. It's just very visual. Um, I can't remember the actress's name who does Chris Pine's wife. I'll pop her photo here. I always love her. I think she is absolutely amazing. I just feel like all of the glamorous um, kind of actors and actresses that the Gen Z are loving at the moment were in the film. Olivia Wilde was directing and she's also in the film. I also really liked her character. And the outfits were amazing. It's, yeah, it's not like a hard-hitting Oscar, maybe, maybe not an Oscar winner, but I really enjoyed it. It's kind of like a bit of a chick flick, a little, it's kind of Wolf of Wall Street. It's, it's, fun and fabulous to watch. It's a feast for the eyes. It's beautifully shot. A little bit cliche in places, um, but I don't, I don't mind that. Not every film has to be, you know, Oscar worthy, quite frankly, and I really enjoyed it. Look how glowy my skin is. If you were to be um, a member of this film, you would literally need this moisturizing skincare routine because having been to Palm Springs, it is dry. My skin and my hair had never been as dry as they were on that trip. So Rose um, Micro Oil Infused Serum, Plumping Hydration Serum. Then I applied, oh, and that was my second, second level skincare. So in the mornings, pretty much every morning, wake up, micellar water, uh, Clay de Polar Serum or Shiseido Full Expansion Serum if I used the night version of the Shiseido Serum the night before. Then a vitamin C and then go and do my watering in the garden. Then come and use an essence. I use the Clay de Polar Hydrating Lotion. And then I start again with the serum that my skin needs for the day, which today was this. Super hydrating moisturizer. This. Um, SPF. Do do do. And now, while my skin absorbs more, I will um, 
go and get dressed. But just to finish on the film, so let me tell you about some of the other amazing films that are out on Sky this month, because there really are so many amazing ones. There's one which is about AI, which I think sounds really interesting, especially having listened to Stephen Bartlett's latest podcast. Simulant, yeah, AI, an AI's attempt to win over someone's heart, a Sky original film, intriguing. Paradise Highway, a truck driver smuggling illicit cargo to save her brother from a deadly prison gang, FBI operatives hot on her trail, again, love the sound of that. It's, don't you think it's unusual for summer to be like full of amazing films? Normally I would say summer is a bit of a lull, but there's so many amazing films right now. Don't worry darling, The Woman King, an all-female unit of warriors protecting an African kingdom. I don't know if that's cartoon or not, might be. And then there's a Jurassic Park pop-up. Um, a Batman collection. There's loads. There is loads going on on Sky Cinema this month. How fun. How fabulous. That's definitely been up there with one of the most enjoyable films that I've watched on Sky Cinema. Just to finish the hydration, this is from Ule. Le Beau Reset. A balancing floral facial mist. This is going to be coming with me in my handbag today. Because it's a really big mist. Like, it really... <laughs> mists you quite a lot and it smells gorgeous and it's so refreshing on a hot day okay I'm gonna get dressed in a little bit of a don't worry darling inspired outfit and then I'm gonna be making a salad with some bits from the kitchen garden to take with us to George and Petra's today I was going to make a rhubarb tart but apparently Viv found a pudding so she's gonna bring that Charlie's mum my mother-in-law uh, so yes I'm gonna do a mange to freshly potted bean and pea quinoa and feta salad. Hi darlings, I have done a very don't worry darling-esque makeup look to go with my very Palm Springs inspired outfit. This is what I'm going to wear today. I have to say that Forever New are having a very good season at the moment. This is Forever New. Um, the little white dress that I wore to the Elemis Rose Farm in Upton Bishop, that was also Forever New. A lot of people thought it was Zimmerman, but it was not. And they've got a really gorgeous yellow, very similar to this, bright yellow dress with cutout patches, which I might wear next week. We've got a few fun things going on next week, but it's really gorgeous and I'm just loving yellow at the moment. So I've done a hopefully heatwave day with the family <laughs> um, appropriate makeup look, starting with a very lightweight BB cream. A Borean um, Creme Makeup Face Cream Baby Skin Effect. I love this. If you're having a pretty good skin moment, then this is all you need. I love it on holiday. Love it. It's probably, no, I'm going to say it. It is my favourite summer base. Then I applied Charlotte Tilbury Beautiful Skin Cream Bronzer. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Beautiful Skin Sun Kissed Glow Bronzer. On the back it says Science and Colour. Hmm. Lovely. And then sticking with the cream theme, we have got the Clay de Peau Cream Blush, which on camera is super subtle, but in real life it is gorgeous. Seriously gorgeous. Like a it's like so natural, and because they're all cream, all these products just blend into each other, and I think if you know you're gonna be warm in the day, then this is perfection. I am a shiny gal, <laughs> so I've used the Rodial Glass Powder, on pretty much my entire face, <laughs> essential, on my eyelids. I actually took a colour 
from the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder, which I got on Cult Beauty. And I have an always on Cult Beauty discount code, which I'll leave on the screen here. Um, then what did I do in my eyebrows? Laura Mercier, that is not the right product. Laura Mercier Brow Pencil in the shade Blonde. It's got a spoolie, that's the pencil side. It's got a spoolie on one side, it's so great for brushing up your brows. I've got a few brow hairs at the moment that are just going wild. Just not going where I want them to go. So a spoolie is always very useful. And then I set them down set them in place with the fluff up brow wax from benefit which i love it's fabulous mascara i use charlotte tilbury push up lashes i'm still benefiting from an lvl lash lift and that's just a really nice natural mascara very um flattery lips i used code 8 lip liner in the shade Surrealist, no, Pablo, Pablo, keeping it nice and pink and finishing with Urban Decay's Naked Cream Lipstick. I think it's, I think it's the Naked Lipstick in the shade Cream. Lovely. And I'm going to finish the finish with something that I'm very excited to try, Beauty Pie's Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil. <laughs> Another of my favourite brands, it does a collagen lip product and I love it, so let's see if this is similar. Oh, it smells good. Oh my god. That is stunning. Have I got one of Dickens' hairs on my face or am I growing a moustache? Thank goodness. <laughs> it was one of Dickens' hair. Mmm. That is lovely. Beauty Pie Wonder Gloss Collagen Lip Oil in the shade Island Rose. Oh, I love it. Mmm. Gorgeous. That is a very juicy, summery makeup look inspired by Don't Worry Darling. Um, I need a setting spray. Where is my setting spray? Invisible Hydrating Setting Spray matches my dress from Laura Mercier, officially the best setting spray in the world. Wore it on my wedding day. Do you know what's funny about my wedding day? Normally I can be so quite, um, don't want to say self-conscious, but like I feel the need to check my makeup throughout the day and I'll be like, oh, is the makeup on my chin gone or do I need to blot somewhere? On my wedding day, I don't think I looked in the mirror once, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. I just trusted that the makeup would look fabulous all day, and it did. I did have a top up at like 2 p.m. and then just partied. <laughs> I actually think I had another top up at like 4, but yeah. Anyway, so I am now going to um, pick some broad beans. Let's go. Hello, I'm back. Um, I'm obviously not going to wear <laughs> these accessories in the garden, but just to complete my Don't Worry Darling inspired outfit, I'm going to go with these Little River Island um, pearl sandals, which are a bit of a dupe for the Tory Burch ones that I actually... Did I buy the Tory Burch ones in Palm Springs? No, I think I wore them in Palm Springs and Freddie was looking for them in the Tory Burch stores there. Um, but they didn't have her size. However, I did buy these in Palm Springs and they are so perfect for Don't Worry Darling. I wore these on my wedding day. They are Dolce & Gabbana and yeah, I literally bought them in Palm Springs and they are very Don't Worry Darling-esque. Do we have pockets in this dress? Don't think we do. And then I would match the pearls from my shoes with this little Amazon bag. Gorgeous Linda. So, this is the outfit of the day. I will um, grab these accessories again when we're ready to go. Does it have a dipped hem? Uh, yeah, it does. This dress has got a slightly dipped hem. So pretty. And um, in the film, the housewives, their duty is just to like cook for the husbands and clean the house. Quite wholesome, but also a little bit weird. But that's literally what I'm gonna do this morning. Not the cleaning. <laughs> Ain't nobody got time to clean on a hot sunny day but I am going to do a little bit of wholesome gardening and um, food preparation, just like Florence and Olivia Wilde's characters 
in the film. So let's get outside. I can't wait to get into the sunshine. <laughs> Tough day so far, Dexy. Do you want to come and help mommy find some broad beans? No, mommy, I'm busy. I've got stuff to do. So I've just potted all of my broad beans um, and a few of the peas. I'm now gonna add them to some boiling water just literally for two minutes, just so they soften a tiny weeny bit. I've got some of the mange too that I picked this morning here. I've got loads more in the fridge that I picked yesterday. So they'll also go in the water just two minutes having to use the, um, whatchamacallit? What do you call it? Induction hob because the aga is switched off for summer and I really don't know what to do without it. But here we go. So I'll just give that a few more seconds to start bubbling. And then we shall do a little light blanche. Should we do a light blanche, Dexy? When I worked for Heston Blumenthal, Daddy, and I taught him everything I know. Yes. We got three Michelin stars at the Fat Duck. Did you? He promised me as part of my deal that he would call it the Fat Sausage Shop. Oh. And he broke that promise. Heston, that's just, it's just not good enough. It's not good enough. If you make a promise to a sausage, you have to keep your promise to a sausage. has blanched. We've actually got the most boring job which is potting the broad beans. It takes a while but it's worth it for the little green gems inside. So for every broad bean, oops there's the church bells, you have to break break the pod with a little nick at the top, you might get a knife actually, and then just bloop, <laughs> out comes the bit that we want. So we've just got back from the Sunday church service, which was really lovely. And I'm now filling up one of my many, many, many posy glasses left over from the wedding with a little bunch of flowers for Petra. I have been very busy picking my sweet peas. So there might be a few in bloom. Take some sweet peas to my sweet pea. Let's grab some Skysaurus. I'm gonna have to put the salad together when we get to Petra's. I just feel that it would get a little bit hot and sweaty if I put it together now. So I'll just put all the ingredients in her fridge. Oh yes, look, the old reliable sweet pea has given me a few new blooms since yesterday.
there now after the most glorious afternoon with George and Petra and Bevan Martin and Lala and Nan. It was really lovely to show Nan lots of the pictures from the wedding um, and I also popped on my wedding dress. I say popped on, it's not a popping on situation. It's a good 10 minutes of weaving myself into the dress but Charlie actually put me into the dress this time um, and I think he got it an even bigger appreciation for the amazing dress. I've actually got it hung up in here for now. I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. <laughs> yes! After I get it dry cleaned, a lot of my friends that are married have still not dry cleaned their dresses, but I really want to get mine off to the dry cleaner this week. Um, I think there's a specialist place in Chipping Norton that I can get it done properly, but what to do with it afterwards is where I'm still scratching my head a little bit. I have it, I've got my bouquet sorted, that's being eternalised in some beautiful artwork, but what to do with the wedding dress, I'm still not sure. So I'd love to know if you guys have got any ideas. Do I literally just store it in a trunk somewhere? We've got plenty of old trunks in this house. Or do I do something else with it? Any ideas? please let me know. Um, I don't think I am going to do a full video about the dress because I feel like I've spoken about it a lot, but if there are any dress questions, then please let me know down below. You guys know um, I tried on so many different dresses from the likes of browns. Um, I tried on loads of different designers, both British designers and overseas designers. I was even very kindly offered to be flown out to Spain a few times by a Spanish designer and they were going to actually gift me a wedding dress but it was really important to me to get something British made and support a British artist. I'm going to call Emma and her team artists, they truly are just the most incredibly talented team and I'm so so glad that I did that. This dress is completely unique to me. It's a design that I had in my head which then we tweaked. Emma and I had quite a few little kind of brainstorm sessions. I tried on a few of the dresses that she created previously and we took some inspiration from those as well. Um, let me show it to you in a bit more detail now that, now that I can. Oh, it really is just so beautiful. It truly, truly is. So the top layer is this gorgeous, incredibly light, soft tulle, which has got this, this beautiful polka dot pattern to it. And I had never, ever, ever seen anyone get married in a polka dot wedding dress before, but I just thought it was so fun and almost makes it a little bit more playful, I think. Um, and then to make it ultra flattering and a little bit more smart on the bodice, it was actually Emma who suggested this style of pleating. So we've got this triangular kind of um, shaping at the top here, which just makes it ultra, ultra flattering. Literally made my waist look minuscule and then pleating going horizontally around the edge. We played around a lot with the positioning of this to get it perfect. Again, something else that was Emma's idea based on another of her dresses that I tried on was the ruffle at the top here. And you guys might remember, I also have the sleeves, which have the same ruffle at the top and the bottom. Of course, I always hoped it would be a really warm day, so it was important to me that I could take the sleeves off. And then I did, in fact, have three different belts. So for the church service, I wore a belt the same color as this fabric, just really plain and simple. And I wanted to make it a little bit more kind of bohemian for the garden party part of the day. So I had a sage green coloured plaited belt, which is a little bit inspired by some Alice Templey dresses that I had tried on many, many, many years ago. And it perfectly matched the bridesmaid dresses, which was fabulous. So as you know, it was a really fabulous and just amazing design detail that we had so many of mine and Charlie's favourite flowers embroidered onto the dress and also some wheat which actually we're about to go for a little walk in the wheat field opposite and then some of mine and Charlie's favorite flowers from our herbaceous border so we've got a ridgeron we've got an enemy which is my personal favorite we've even got down here there's an amazing cow parsley look at that beautiful cow parsley um, there's even some foxgloves oh this one's gorgeous look at this and there are somewhere some alliums as well. I had guests just coming up to me and rummaging through the dress to find their favorite flowers. Where's the allium? The allium's quite, oh, there's one. Um, an allium, of course, 
a favourite of both mine and Charlie's. And these were all created by the most talented lady named Mimi, who works with Emma. And it took Mimi <laughs> a very long time. I think she was listening to, what's that language app, Duolingo, and I think she learnt, learnt Italian <laughs> while she was doing all of my embroidery. And the train, the veil, also had a little bit of embroidery down at the bottom as well. And the way that we did this, look, I love this little bit of salvia. The way that we did this was Mimi actually sketched out the flowers. I sent her photos of flowers from our herbaceous border, from our garden. She sketched them out onto tracing paper. And then we actually spent some time pinning them onto the dress so that the position of them was absolutely perfect. Um, I wanted it to be quite voluminous. So we've got the tool layer. We've got a plain tool layer underneath and another, and another, and another, and another. I think we've got about six layers. And then we've got a layer of organza, more organza, a kind of classic wedding dress silk. Um, then we've got some roughly layers, like a slightly thicker, almost like a netting, which is bound at the bottom to create a little bit more shape. A really pretty kind of lingerie netting style, again, all to give it a really romantic fluffiness. And then we did, I did also have a loop, a ring, inside the dress, which not only gave the dress its beautiful, big, wide, voluminous shape, but it also gave me a little bit more um, movement. It meant that my legs were not covered in fabric the whole time, which helped keep me cool. I was very, very grateful for that. And I just adore it. Loved it from the first time I tried it on. Loved wearing it today. Will love it forever. Need to need to just keep it somewhere where it can be seen and admired for many many years to come so there we go my darlings that is the story of my absolutely sensational one-of-a-kind bespoke wedding dress and i could not love it any more gosh it has become the most gorgeous evening to be honest it's been the most beautiful day not uncomfortably hot i think george and petra's garden is perfectly sheltered and look at this you cannot even see okay aside from a few little marks where the wooden boards were you cannot even tell where the marquee was that rain after the wedding was perfect and he's stretching my sweet look how great the geraniums are looking either side of the pathway Hello snooty patooty. Geraniums are just looking absolutely fabulous. Just while we wait for Charlie, I'll give you some more garden updates. So as you can see the salvia, fabulous, truly fabulous. And the jasmine is starting to flower. We really didn't think it would this year. But wowza, <laughs> wowza trouser, as Alex, my Pilates instructor would say. Wow's a trouser indeed. It is very floral. These hydrangeas are a little bit slower, but these are the ones that we borrowed for our wedding from Nicholson's, but as you might be able to guess, we've fallen in love with them and we're now going to buy them. Well, we have bought them now from Nicholson's. A few that have snapped off, I'm just gonna bring into the house. Oh, you're getting too tall. So I will bring these snapped off bits. I'll just put them in some water quickly. Okay, so we have got lots of these lovely little potted salvias, which were for the wedding breakfast. Oh, Bumblebee's just having a little snuffle of that one. Can you see him? Just having a little bit of an evening snack. Yes, we had them on our wedding breakfast table. We love salvias, as you can tell from the dress. Lavender's doing well. Wisteria wasn't the best year for the wisteria, sadly. Didn't get too many blooms out of it. Gosh, this is such a gorgeous time of day in the garden. Quite windy, so I hope it's not too loud in the camera. With my lupins, I am um, trimming them. To be honest, I might come out now. Any that look a little bit, you know, not their best anymore like this, I do trim them. And it means that more little baby ones like this will start to come through. You wouldn't think lupins are cut and come again, but then two years ago, I didn't even know that dahlias were. My beautiful roses, every time I walk past them, I just scan for any that need deadheading. Again, the more you deadhead, the more energy goes back into creating new blooms. 
Woo, look at that. It's also just very therapeutic. Here in the greenhouse, I've got my first little tomatoes. Look at this, very, very exciting. First little baby tomatoes. I did give them a good feed a couple of days ago, so that might be why. And very excitingly, I've got lots, oh, it's a bit silhouette -y. lots of little baby cucumbers coming through. We had some of the cucumbers sliced up in our salads today. These little, um, is this a geranium? Or something beginning with C. Also just needs deadheading. The um, stems get a little bit sticky, but yeah, the more you deadhead, the more it'll come back. Is the running theme with most of these bits and bobs. Golden hour in the kitchen garden. Oh, it's just such a beautiful area, it truly is. I love our wedding photos from this area. I will pop some on the screen here. Ooh. More roses to deadhead. My hands smell amazing after I do the deadheading. You can see how we just had so much confetti on our wedding day. It's perfect. So Charlie and I were exceptionally lucky on our wedding day. We just trotted out here after we'd had our main course. Wow, took five fun. minutes and got some photos in here. I know, if you look at the footpath, it'll be really dry. We've not had rain in, well, had rain on Monday. Rain last week, but it wasn't, when it's this dry, you need days and days of it. Yeah. So we just had a little walk down this pathway to take some wedding photos. Oh gosh, how lucky are we to have this on our doorstep. And the next field. Wow, roses. Wow, I don't remember there being roses here. No. Gosh, wild English rose. English hedgerow rose. Come on, sweet little bunny rabbit, you know the way. this next field of wheat when I woke up the morning after our wedding at 4am with aching feet sun had just risen and this field was completely golden the wispy bits on top just caught by the morning sun how magical is this Amazing. look at this can't decide which I prefer the wheat or the barley we love them I both I mummy. I think I always get them the wrong way around, but I think I think this one is wheat. Yeah. Because the Weetabix logo has got the fluff on it. I think it's wheat and the other one's barley, but I could be wrong. Yeah. Oh my gosh, it's just amazing. The the wind ripples over. And it's like ocean waves. In a few weeks' time this will all be golden. I remember coming out here a couple of years ago and getting um, Dickens. the gladiator. Now we are free. Soundtrack to it. Come on then, Dixie. Let's go. Let's go. Dickens. Off in a wild one, Dickens. Not too far, chat.
I realise that we do live in actual heaven. <laughs> crazy warm but it's a lot warmer than it should be so I think we're gonna have to take you back for the drink of water aren't we? I'm a little bit thirsty. Yeah we'll take you straight back. It's amazing how warm it still is. Yeah it's hard to know you can't really walk with your old dogs at any time. No. I think we'll just admire the beauty of that field but we'll turn back because we don't want filet getting overheated no. nobody looks an overcooked oh. nobody Should likes an back. overcooked filet. Yeah. Come on daddy I'll show you I'll show you the way I'll show you the way. Come on then. Yes, mommy and daddy have got a honeymoon to book. The thing with being not a very tall puppy is that I can't tell which way you've gone, Mummy and Daddy. So when the road forks, I don't have a clue. Hey, 